Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, we are going to set up AWS single sign-on. In short, it is called AWS SSO. So we will go ahead and set up the AWS SSO in our master account. And we will use Azure AD as the identity store for our SSO. And once we have set it up, I will show you that how can we go ahead and uh, basically enable this thing that a user who is part of AD or Azure AD, let's say, would be able to use his credentials as that of AD and can log in to Amazon Management Console. We will also try to learn that how can you go ahead and have different permission sets how can you basically define custom roles which different users would assume? I already have the organization set. So let me just quickly show you that. Here you can see that I've got an organization and in my organization currently I have four accounts. This one is the master account and currently I'm logged in to the master account. So let us go ahead and get started. What we'll do is on the Azure side, I have just gone ahead and created a new Azure account. And as part of this, you know, we get some free uh, tier benefits. And in addition to that, around $200 for us to use, you know, and the duration for that is one month. So first thing is we'll go ahead and we will try to see the active directory part, basically Azure Active Directory on uh, this side. So if you click on Azure Active Directory, you would see that the version which is available as part of this is Azure AD free. Now this is not going to support uh, the, the onboarding of enterprise apps. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and upgrade this AD and thankfully we have got this free subscription, uh, you know, so we need not pay for it. It will all get covered within that. So let me go ahead and do it. Here is the article which uh, AWS published some time back. We are going to follow this article and we will go ahead and set up uh, AWS SSO uh, against Azure Active Directory. I will also explain you in detail that what are permission sets and what a strategy you should follow to actually go ahead and set up permission sets, which is going to be uh, a real good thing to learn actually. So if I go here, you can see that uh, currently it is Azure AD free. So um, what I'll do is I'll go to enterprise apps or enterprise applications. And uh, if I press on new application and I'll go for non gallery application, you can say it says get a free premium trial to use this feature. So if you click here, you have two options. You can go for Azure AD premium P2, or you can go for enterprise mobility plus security E5. Now you can think that this one is a superset. You can go ahead and choose, uh, you know, whichever you like, but at minimum you require this one. Now there is no harm in going and picking up this one itself. So I'll just say activate. It might take a couple of seconds to go ahead and activate this one. So let us go and put a name for our application here say add now you can see uh, this part is set next i will go to single sign on on the left side and choose the saml option as you can see there are few things which are required here so what i'll do is i'll first go ahead and download this federation metadata xml so let me press on download okay Next step, I need to go to AWS Management Console and here I'll go ahead and enable AWS SSO. Remember, you need to do the you need to do this in the AWS master account. And there are certain regions where AWS SSO is available. So you only those regions you can go ahead and choose. For example, Northern Virginia, Ohio, Oregon and some of these regions. Uh, 
uh, it is also important to understand that you cannot go and enable AWS SSO in multiple regions. You will be able to enable it only in one region and then its scope is global. So I'm there in Northern Virginia. I'll say enable AWS SSO. It says your request has a problem. Let us see what could be the reason. If I refresh this, Okay, so let us try to press again and see. So it says it will take 30 seconds. We can wait for that and this time it went through. So I wanted to show you this, so I'll not edit it out, right? Uh, some of the times you might get such type of challenges. Now, I did not press on enable SSO before, but, if, but just even in the first time, we got this particular error. Don't worry about it. You are not going to do this every day. Okay, so next thing now is you need to go ahead and actually do certain settings here on the SSO portal side. So the first step which we need to do is we need to choose our identity store or identity source. Basically, you know, where have we got our user and their credentials stored, right? So you can see currently for identity source, AWS SSO is written, which means you can go ahead and maintain users and groups here itself, right? You can do that as well. But in our case, we'll press on change and we will say we'll use an external identity provider. Now, when you choose that, you will be able to go ahead and download this metadata file. You need to do that. And later on, we'll use this metadata file on the Azure side. And you remember we downloaded a file earlier. We are going to take that file and put it here in the second one. So let's do both. First, press on this download. Okay. And then here, we need to browse and select the file which we earlier downloaded from the Azure portal. All right. Next. Okay, so from this side, things seems to be okay. All right, what we need to do next is we need to go to the Azure side and do a few steps. On the Azure side, we have an option to say upload metadata file. Press on this and select the file which we downloaded from the AWS portal. So this is the one. I'll say open and say add. We can go and just press on save. It says test single sign-on with AWS SSO. To ensure that single sign-on works for your application, we recommend using the testing capability in the last step to test the changes you recently made. Would you like to test it now? We can say yes, not a problem, say yes. So it will give you you know this option you can go ahead and use it now but we'll just close this all right so what we need to do next is there is a very important step which we need to do which is basically enabling the automatic provisioning what does that mean so what we want to achieve is as and when a new user gets created in the azure ad it should automatically flow to the aws sso site right uh, also Let's say there are new users who are joining the organization, right? So what we could do is we can just make them a part of particular AD group and Because they are they become part of a particular AD group, you know, their information flows on the AWS SSO side So we need to we, we you know, we don't need to change things much. For example, if we will go ahead and give access uh, you know um, read only access to a particular AD group now today there might be 10 members in that AD group. Tomorrow, three more members join the team. All you need to do is add those three members to that particular AD group, that's it. And they automatically get access to AWS because of the fact that we have enabled automatic provisioning. These three users would automatically flow on the to the AWS SSO side 
because they are part of that ad group now we will go ahead and do all of it okay so let us come here to the aws portal click on enable automatic provisioning so when you click here you will actually get a skim endpoint and you'll also have an access token uh, certain things are confidential so you should not share it with anyone so press on this you need to take both of these copy this and we are going to use it on the azure side so go here and click on provisioning so provisioning mode between manual and automatic we want automatic now here we need to put the tenant url so put that particular thing the skim endpoint next you need to copy this access token go ahead and paste this and after this press on test connection let us see all right so there is a small tick here go ahead and press save after this all right so you press on save uh, next thing which you need to do is you need to go ahead and actually edit some mappings um, so basically on the ad side you might you can have users and you may also have groups right so we need to take care of this part so press here now in this uh, you know some of the things you can just leave default as you can say you can see target object action so basically what are we saying whenever there is a create update or delete on the azure ad side we need to push those changes to the aws sso side right all the changes we want that it should reflect there now uh, you will see that there are so many uh, attributes here uh, we do not need all of these attributes you can actually go ahead and get rid of uh, you know get rid of many of these an important one is this one uh, you know external id so what you should do click here and uh, if you click on left side it will give you this option and you should change this to object id right this basically it's like you are saying that uh, you are choosing the the unique id on the ad side to flow there um, in addition to that uh, you should also probably edit the the email part right so this one click on this and instead of mail just go ahead and choose user principal name okay all right you may get rid of some of these unnecessary fields because you will not have all of these fields available on the aws sso side we do not require that much right uh, we probably do not need employee id department manager etc um okay given name preferred name all of these things are fine um i guess with this we should be able to do it so let's go ahead and press on save i guess it got completed uh we can go ahead and see here okay I just actually disabled this thing it is very irritating all right so now that we have completed this part come back we can now go ahead and actually switch on the provisioning status and then press on save but before we do that we need to actually go ahead and map some users and groups to this particular application then only it would flow to AWS side isn't it now for that I need to click here to users and groups you need to see this carefully i'm currently operating or i'm currently within this aws sso enterprise application so the users and groups which appear here you can think that these users and groups are mapped to this particular app but first of all we need to go ahead and create few users currently we do not have any so let me just leave this page here and duplicate this and I'll go ahead and actually create few users and groups. Uh, this should be easy. Go to groups. And uh, say new group. 
this should be of security type then only it will flow you know to the aws sso side do not create a group of office 365 type so just choose security give it a name let's call it infosec you know uh, maybe infosec underscore team and give it a description all right so we'll just leave this one as it is we can go ahead and make somebody the owner as well for now i'll just make myself owner you know if you have many users you can do that as well so we'll just go ahead and say create we will, we will later on create few users and put them in in these groups okay so we'll just say create so this group is created i'll also go ahead and create one two more groups you know quickly so let's call this uh, reader group please understand that uh, you know really an ad group would get what permission this we are going to decide on the aws sso side but still i am naming the groups in such a meaningful way so that as new people join your organization or your team you can just add them to the correct group that's the whole idea and let me just create one more which would be last and this i'm gonna call admin group you know all id admins belong here and once again select this select say create so we have got three groups created we'll now go ahead and create few users quickly all right we'll press on new user so we need to give some name let's call john we can add him to multiple groups if you want now itself let's do that i want him to be part of these two groups okay it's fine if you want you can give some country and all that's not mandatory just say create Okay, John is created. I'll create a couple of more users. Next users, Chris is part of admin group, let's say. And I'll just say select. Just press on create. One last user, I'll go ahead and create. I'm gonna call it Ronnie. You know, I'm doing this type of setup because I want to show you that when a particular user is part of multiple groups, how would things work? I've got a couple of more users in every group. So here I've got two. If I go back and click on InfoSec, I can show you that I've got two and these are some other users. I'll go back to reader group and here also i've got you know three different users so now we are in good shape what i'm gonna do is i'll go ahead and actually map these groups to our application so go back here and we'll go to users and groups in the aws sso enterprise app press on add user click here and you should be able to select users or groups now i would highly recommend that you select groups because that way you have the flexibility right so i'll select one two and the third group do not select individual users and let them flow to the aws sso site if you select groups you know you have the complete control that you can actually add some user or remove a, a user from a group and then automatically that change would flow to the uh, you know to the aws site so I selected all the three groups and I'll say assign. All right, so this assignment is done. Now what I'll do is I will go ahead and actually go back to provisioning and here I'll have to say provision it now or basically I, I'm gonna you know change this provisioning status to on and then I'll press on save. 
all right so as you know uh, all of this is set already i'll go ahead and say on and after this i'll press on save so let us see what happens all right so it says it is updated we can actually go here and try to refresh so it will take some time guys for the you know for the first time when it runs it takes some time for it to actually get executed but you know ideally once it goes through you will see the percentage to be 100 percent complete uh, you know once that happens you will be able to see the groups on the aws sso side so let us wait for a few minutes and then check it again all right so i want to show you that i pressed on refresh and now it shows that five users and two groups uh, actually have been you know sent to the aws side so this much got provision but if you actually remember we had three groups so one group actually did not go through so it will try to try to do that again it says one errors are being retried let us press on refresh and see it hasn't gone through yet you can also do this thing sometimes you can press on clear current state and restart synchronization uh, if you want you can do that to just kind of flush the flush the whole thing and just do it from start uh, remember in the scope it's better that you select sync only assigned users and groups right i mean the assigned users and groups to this particular app that's what it means now let's click on view audit logs and try to see what's the issue while it loads let's come here and try to see if we get something wow as you can see we have got two groups available here infosec team and reader group right and these two groups have come from the ad side if you press on users you should see five users here these five users uh, haven't uh, got provisioned here individually rather these got created here with the help of groups because these five users are part of these two groups that's why they are created there now let's see what happened here all right so let's do one thing we'll come here again we'll try to refresh doesn't go through so let's do one thing we'll say clear current state and restart synchronization so after clicking this we'll say save and we are just gonna start it from scratch basically the the synchronization process it does happen many of the times there are not very specific reasons around this uh, even when some everything is okay sometimes a particular object doesn't flow through but the good thing is uh, azure ad would try to send it once again in a while so even if you leave it after some time it would get provisioned typically in all the organizations whenever there is a change which happens at the ad level people will generally give you a message that wait for some time to see this change that's how this one is also there when it gets refreshed what we could probably do is we can go ahead and look at the permission sets within aws sso so let me go here and if i go to aws accounts you can see i'll be able to see all the different aws accounts uh, you can also press on left hand side and look at your different organizational units so that way it becomes a bit easy if you press on a particular organizational unit you'll be able to see the accounts which are only inside that organizational unit okay uh, it would have been better if clicking on this would have shown me the bu01 prod account as well but they do not do that way you need to click on the actual ou which contains the accounts and only those accounts would be shown anyway so if i press here i would be able to see two accounts right or i can go to all accounts to see everything so what we'll do is we need to actually make a combination here a combination of a certain ad group 
getting access to certain accounts certain aws accounts with certain permission sets right so let's take an example and try to do it so what i can do is i can go and select the fm security account and fm logging account so what i want to do is i want to probably give uh, users who are part of infosec group you know i want to give them uh, access to these two accounts i'll select these two and i'll press on assign users I will be able to go ahead and select either users or groups as i told earlier it's better you always operate with groups so i'll select infosec team press on next now here is the place where you will go ahead and select a permission set we currently do not have any permission set created so we will have to go ahead and create a new one permission set is nothing but uh, you know set of policies it could be a combination of uh, managed policies and uh, custom policies as well so whatever permission you want to actually give to a set of users that you can come and define here in the permission set now you will see that there are many existing uh, you know permission sets as well or i should say existing job function policies there it's the, the whole idea is that many of the times people just go with this type of uh, permissions right sometimes people might want to make a particular group as admin sometimes they might want to just give them billing access or just read only type of access and things like that so you can go ahead and select one of the existing ones or you may also choose to go ahead and write a completely custom one as well okay i can just go ahead and show you a completely new one i can just select one of these that would be very easy but i want to show you a custom one so let me press on create a custom permission set let me name this i'll name it as um let's say i want to actually allow this user to be able to to be able to you know read everything but at the same time i do not want to allow him to download anything from the s3 bucket you know just a just a scenario so let's say read access no s3 download why am i doing this because there are chances that i have got some confidential files in s3 i would not want this person to just come inside and download that particular file these are infosec team members they can come probably to to these accounts and what they can do is they can just take a look at everything fine look at the look at all the attributes of different resources how are we operating look at all of that it is okay but do not go ahead and download any of the files right uh, next thing is what is the session duration session duration is basically the the time for which this role is gonna be applicable so what happens is as part of this permission set as we go ahead uh, what you know what sso would do is it would go ahead and create an iam role in the respective accounts in which accounts the accounts which we selected just some time back two aws accounts we have selected so sso will go ahead and create iam roles in those aws accounts and then you know uh, when the users of infosec group come and uh, come and access SSO portal, they would be able to go ahead and actually assume that IAM role and get inside those AWS accounts. So this particular dropdown is about the validity or length, you know, allowed or the duration allowed for that, for those IAM roles. Let's go ahead and say four hours. Well, I just switched tabs and I came and refreshed it once again. And now I can see all the five users and the three groups actually have synchronized successfully and that's why you see it says 100 percent complete no errors at all so ideally now we should be having all the groups in our sso site but let us go ahead and complete this step first next uh, field is relay state here you can go ahead and specify the aws console url of any of the service let's say what you want is that when a particular user assumes this particular role he should land on to s3 page so you can give that url or let's say if you want that he should land on to guard duty page you can go and give the url of guard duty while you are browsing in aws management console 
try to look at the at the url as you can see currently i'm operating in aws single sign-on service so if you see my url it's like https console.aws.amazon.com slash single sign-on in the same way if i'm operating in s3 it would be probably slash s3 slash home or something like that so whichever service you know you want to redirect uh, that user to you can put it here in the real estate but if you leave it blank no worries person will leave person will actually get inside the aws account uh, you know onto the default page where he will have all the services listed all right so i'm just gonna leave it blank and then is the next thing that what type of policies do you want to attach here again it is just im policy so i'll select both okay i want to attach an aws managed policy as well and then i will write a custom uh, policy as well so let me select read only access as i told you i'm gonna give read only access but in addition to that i would also like to deny s3 downloads so s3 get object i'll go ahead and deny so first let me let me try and select read only access probably it's taking some time to load okay so here it is read only access i selected this and next i'll go ahead and write here an s3 get object deny so i've put here a very simple policy s3 get object deny for all the resources so person would be able to of course go ahead and look at all the s3 buckets go and go would be able to go ahead and go and look at all the objects inside that but if he tries to download any object that would be denied we'll go ahead and press on create this will actually go ahead and create the permission set remember i need to select this and now press finish so what it would do it would actually go ahead and now create iam roles in these two aws accounts so now that is done what we can also do now is go to groups and we should ideally see three groups now beautiful we can see that now i will go to this place i'll go to fmw master account assign users i'll just select this doesn't seem to have refreshed let's press on refresh all right so we'll select admin we'll say next and this time i'll just say create a new permission set i'm just gonna use one of the existing ones which would be admin so let's say these are the admin guys and i want to give them access into the master account so that's why I selected the master account in the first step. So I'm going to select administrator and we'll say create. All right, select this and press on finish. So this is also done. Uh, let me check something. So if I click on admin group, I've got Chris and Steve and uh, infosec group again i've got john and steve so if you see steve is part of two groups i think steve would be a good use case to actually show you the demo okay so let me go ahead and now do the demo of aws single sign-on before doing that we need this url you know the portal url we can go ahead and even customize this so let me try something i will call it ki apps global We'll say save and this is set so we are going to use this url to actually go ahead and log in to our sso let me show you that now it probably takes a couple of minutes so we'll have to we'll have to wait uh, now it's going through so it should now take me to the to the login page of uh, of azure ad and then i will log in with steve user you can see that it is going to be steve at knowledge india in outlook dot on microsoft.com so we can probably just copy this thing to make our life simple let us see if it gives us the login page of azure okay seems to be going through remember you might have to wait for a couple of minutes and say next All right.
so it got authenticated with azure ad and you can see that now i've got access to three accounts why is it so is steve actually part of all the three user groups let us go ahead and see um, for steve what are the groups infosec and admin okay so let's see here i do remember so we did it like this we actually gave read access no s3 download to actually two accounts so that's what we are seeing you know fmw security account and fmw logging account and we gave administrator access to fmw master account now steve can actually go ahead and select any one out of these and he would be able to get inside the management console not only this if you if let's say steve wants to actually use um, command line he can press on this and the secret credentials would get generated for Steve which he can go ahead and use you know as you can see it is given here access key ID access secret uh, secret access key and the session token so of course these are temporary they will be gone after some time after how much time the time which you specified while defining the permission set we had given it four hours so these would be valid for four hours after that no use of these credentials now let's say if the if this user steve has to get inside fmw login account he can just press on you know management console and he would go ahead and actually assume a role uh, because he has got all the read access, so I'll be able to show you a few things. What I'll do is, in this account, I'll go to IM and I will show you what all got created, you know, in the account. So as you can see, I'm inside this particular account, which is F FMW logging account. And I have actually assumed a role. Let me show you that role. So it will make more sense, you know. All right, so if you see here, if I go to roles, SSO has created some IM roles, I told you. You can come here and see AWS reserved SSO. All the roles which are created by SSO, they start like this. After that, underscore, read access, no S3 download. This is the name which I had given to the permission set. And after that, there will be a randomly generated, you know, string of characters and numbers. If you click on this, you'll be able to see that whatever permissions i had added to that permission set those things got uh, you know actually copied here you can say or created here whatever i had written custom that got created here as an inline policy one more important thing is if you go to trust relationship you'll be able to see that this is actually you know uh, the this role has trusted entity as a saml provider so this saml provider also actually gets created within this account you can see this is the account number of this particular account right so if you go on the left hand side to the identity providers you will see the saml provider this also got provisioned uh, by aws sso only so you do not have to do all of the setup everything is taken care by aws sso now the good thing is let's say after some time if your requirements change right let's say for this particular permission set which you had created you think that okay i might want to give some more permission to to actually this permission set so no problem you can go to aws sso just add one two more policies to this permission set and then from there you can say reprovision and in all the aws accounts in your in your organization this this im role will will get updated with the new permissions that's the beauty of it so as you can see how easily i just got inside this particular aws account and i can now go ahead and do whatever i want here based on the permissions which i have got you know once i'm done here i can just either press log out or, you, or i can just go ahead and close this as well and you know if i want to just get into some other account i can do that if i let's say i press on this one it would now take me to another account you see it is now putting me inside the master account it's just that easy and as you can see i'm now inside the master account and here i've got all the access all the permission so that is what i wanted to show you uh, this was a complete detailed demo on uh, on aws sso 
I hope you understood how to do it. Um, I will leave uh, the, the link for this particular article in the description which you can go ahead and follow if you also want to do it or you can do it along with our video by pausing it in between. Uh, an important thing would be to understand that how should we actually go ahead and uh, and plan for the plan for the permissions right uh, that would be a really important thing to understand so in order to explain that this is what i would suggest what you should do is you should you should create a mapping first you know where you say that there will be an ad group what would be this ad groups function you know like whether it is gonna do read write what 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 is it gonna do right what type of permissions do you want to give to this particular ad group and the next thing would be on which aws accounts do you want to give this ad group this particular functionality right so first go ahead and actually create a document like this once you are done with that document you you can go ahead and do all the work it would be very easy so let's say i can go ahead and create an ad group which which i would call you know as i said you know like infosec uh, read infosec reader and this group will have the function of read access to all aws accounts right so when i say when i say all aws accounts then it would mean that i would go ahead and actually give access uh, access to this particular ad group to all our aws accounts right so i can say to all aws accounts that's how the mapping would be there can be another thing let's say there might be an it team right so you can say central it admin there is a there is an it team uh, of course it compose uh, you know it has got many administrators in it so you can say this would give admin access to accounts which accounts maybe i do not want to give uh, you know admin access to this group to all the accounts so i can say all aws accounts except master account and then accept infosec account you know something like that so that's that's the whole point so what 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 i'm trying to tell you here is uh, you know this is just more for writing you can actually go ahead and later on put the account numbers here and then when you take this document and sit and do the aws sso work it would be very very easy for you right so the good thing is you have created these ad groups after that you need not go to azure ad again and again you just go ahead and allocate or basically designate correct owners for these ad groups and let them handle uh, the request for adding a member or removing a member they can go ahead and take care of that and as soon as a new member gets added to to an ad group that member would automatically flow to aws sso within few hours and then based on the thing that you know that particular user is part of which ad group or ad groups he would be able to access one or more AWS accounts as I showed you here this particular user Steve was part of actually two AD groups and the way we had given permission to one AD group we had given permission to two AWS accounts FMC, FMW security and FMW logging and to the second AD group we had given access only to one AWS account so that's why you are we are able to see in total three AWS accounts here I hope you understood how to set up AWS SSO and it would benefit you if you really like this then go ahead and press the like button and share it with your friends and if you want to learn more around AWS you can go ahead and watch number of videos which are there on our channel we've got 100 plus videos on our channel with which you can go ahead and get benefited take care guys keep learning bye bye